Hello. Welcome back to the Space School Look, otherwise known as PPSW, your favorite hangout place. Today, we're back with another Star Wars story. Today, we are going to find out what would have happened had Anakin killed his master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, on Mustafar. Before we begin this video, special thanks to our patrons, voice actors, and everyone else a part of the Pentacle team. If you want a chance to win a lightsaber in our next giveaway, watch to the end of the video, and I'll tell you exactly how you can win. Our story begins on the fiery world of Mustafar, where master and apprentice look at each other. Their gazes were fierce. Obi-Wan didn't want it to come to this. He never wanted any of this pain or suffering to find Anakin. Obi-Wan still believed there was good in his apprentice, but he had been sent to Mustafar to complete a mission. Obi-Wan stood on the opposite side of Anakin. His apprentice had just done the worst thing he'd ever seen him do. Obi-Wan knew about Padme and Anakin, but it was a secret they didn't talk about. Obi-Wan knew without being told, but he never betrayed Anakin or told the council about it at all. All he knew is that Padme made Anakin happy, and as long as Anakin was happy, Obi-Wan was happy. Obi-Wan just watched Anakin choke his wife until she passed out. Padme was alright, she was still breathing and alive, but she was out cold on the ground. Obi-Wan couldn't believe this. Obi-Wan knew how much Padme meant to Anakin, and for Anakin to have no control over his actions, it showed how far Anakin had fallen. He was lost. The boy Obi-Wan trained was gone. At this point, here on Mustafar, Anakin Skywalker was no more. Obi-Wan looked into the eyes of Darth Vader. The two of them paced around each other, talking to each other, and the words that came out of Anakin's mouth were heart-wrenching. He was establishing a new empire for himself, built by him. He was consumed by madness of power. He'd abandoned the ways of the Jedi, and far worse, committed himself to the ways of evil. Anakin and Obi-Wan were spaced out as they continued talking, but Anakin spoke an absolute to which Obi-Wan responded with an absolute of his own. A moment later, two lightsabers ignited, and Anakin leapt backwards as he engaged the master. Years of patience, headbutting, love, friendship, guidance, learning, was all over within moments as Vader swung to kill. He was incredibly fast. Obi-Wan and Anakin had danced this dance before. They sparred with each other all the time, and it made each of them better duelists. They knew the other better than anybody else in the galaxy, and Obi-Wan would be the beneficiary of that. Anakin was never patient as a duelist. Very rarely would he ever be able to find that patience. When Anakin did have patience, he was an incredibly deadly duelist. But Anakin here was nowhere near that level of patience. Obi-Wan blocked every swing that came his way. The speed between these two was more impressive than the speed between Sidious and Yoda back on Coruscant. Obi-Wan was pushed to the edge of a platform as he held Anakin back, doing his best to avoid being pushed into the fires below. Anakin pushed harder and harder as Obi-Wan swung his way out of the danger zone as he pushed Anakin back and moved himself around. Obi-Wan was then smacked in the face with Skywalker's boot. Obi-Wan flipped backwards and landed upright as he looked at Skywalker who slowly walked down the stairs. His condescending behavior was that of an overly cocky individual ready to kill. Anakin dragged his blade across the ground as he pulled it up and swung down on Obi-Wan's block. Obi-Wan tumbled back as he moved to prepare to enter combat again with his former pupil. There was one thing for certain, Obi-Wan may have been able to beat numerous foes over the years, but the most important duel of his life was against someone who had not just the physical edge on him, but the force edge as well. Obi-Wan kept backpedaling, avoiding being hit as the doors behind him opened. Obi-Wan stepped into a hallway as Anakin followed with heavy pursuit. Skywalker's eyes began to glow under the disarray of darkness. The two lightsabers lit the darkness of the corridors, and then from behind the glow of the lightsabers, Anakin's eyes were glowing yellow. Obi-Wan looked into them as he dodged a strike made by his former apprentice. Obi-Wan looked back as steam piled out of the wall. Obi-Wan swung back as the two of them interlocked in the middle of the hallway. Their blades matched each other's, and they were stuck at gridlock, face to face. The two of them had nothing to say, all they could do was look at each other. Obi-Wan focused on the duel as Anakin pressed down harder and harder, knowing that he had the physical edge in this battle. Anakin shoved Obi-Wan back into the wall as he swung viciously, as vicious as he could. Obi-Wan ducked and fell out of the way as Anakin took a massive swing and cut through the wall behind him. Obi-Wan pulled himself around and jumped back to his feet, to which he was then again kicked in the face. Obi-Wan got his ground again as he and Anakin began to fight in a lit hallway, where their blades shattered the light around them. Vader pressed the assault as Obi-Wan looked into the man his apprentice became. Obi-Wan shoved back and then moved into his defensive position. Anakin swung violently and then used the force to throw Obi-Wan off of his feet into the door behind him. Obi-Wan smacked his head back against the door as the door opened after having Obi-Wan hit it. Kenobi rolled back as he regained his footing, but there was one glaring issue for Obi-Wan. 
He was extremely dizzy. There was a chance he'd obtained a concussion. Vader didn't care though. He stepped forward again and swung at the noticeably weaker Obi-Wan. Each time Anakin hit Obi-Wan's blade, his body contorted to the way the blade dragged. Anakin shoved his former master over a table as Obi-Wan tumbled over to the ground. Obi-Wan knew it was over. There wasn't a chance that he could stop this monster. Anakin rounded the table in the middle of the room, stepping over the bodies of the Separatist leaders he had killed before. He then reached out his hand. Obi-Wan was lifted off the ground as he began to gasp for air. Kenobi looked at Anakin as he rounded the corner and stood adjacent from Obi-Wan. Skywalker used his other hand as he ripped Obi-Wan's lightsaber out of his hand and placed it on his belt. Obi-Wan floated in the air as his legs stretched out below him without being able to touch the ground. Obi-Wan, instead of feeling pain, surrendered himself to the Force. In his mind, memories played over all the good times he had in his life. Obi-Wan then closed his eyes as he accepted his fate. Anakin started to walk forward, talking about the fall of the Jedi and other things that Obi-Wan wasn't paying attention to. Obi-Wan's memories took him from Qui-Gon to Anakin to all of his friends on the High Council, and his memories faded back to Satine. She was the final one on his mind as everything came full circle. Obi-Wan focused on Satine. Anakin kept talking, trying to get Obi-Wan to respond, but he didn't say a word. Anakin's anger and impatience grew. He finally bested his master and never was able to feel the triumph of his master's defeat. Obi-Wan spoke to who he was seeing in his final moments. He said the words I love you, but not to Anakin, to the woman he loved. As in Obi-Wan's final seconds of life, he stared into the eyes of Satine. Not a ghost, nor a vision, just the most pleasant memory he ever had in his life. Their hands were interlocked and their gazes stuck onto one another, as if not another soul existed in the entire galaxy. Anakin heard Obi-Wan say the words I love you, and his eyebrows stretched down as he jabbed his lightsaber through Obi-Wan's chest. The Jedi Master was released from the Force as he fell to the ground lifelessly. Anakin looked down with pride as he saw Obi-Wan's dead body lay before him. This proved to Anakin that he was unbeatable. His ego was larger than life, and yet, something happened. Obi-Wan's body slowly disappeared into the Force. Anakin jumped back. Was it a Force projection? Was it a vision? Did he actually beat Obi-Wan? Anakin was incredibly confused. He didn't know what just happened. He kicked the robes and they were completely empty. Qui-Gon did one final thing for his former apprentice. He brought him back into the Force with him. He believed that Obi-Wan was deserving enough of this. Anakin turned around and walked out of the room quietly. Anakin wanted to feel triumph and victory, but he looked around and felt none of it. His eyes lost their yellow tint, and Anakin looked around the corner. He saw death everywhere, and while he'd been accustomed to death because of the Clone Wars, this was tragic. Anakin stepped over a couple of bodies and thought about what he did to Obi-Wan. Maybe he should feel better about beating Kenobi in combat, but he couldn't think about that in the moment. Anakin ran out of the room and over towards the ship as the wife arrived in. Anakin found C-3PO carrying Padme into the vessel, and behind him was R2-D2 climbing into the ship. Anakin looked at them as he grabbed his robe off the ground and looked at Obi-Wan's robe that was still there. Anakin's mind flashed back into the interior of the facilities, where Obi-Wan's robes just floated to the ground and the body disappeared. Was the light side more powerful than the dark? Was the only thing that played through Anakin's mind. He walked into the ship as he wrapped his robes around himself. Anakin told C-3PO to prep the ship and head towards Naboo. Padme would be taken to the medical facilities on the planet. Because she was a former queen, she could get the best care. Mustafar was also closer to Naboo than to Coruscant, so it naturally made more sense to go to Naboo. Anakin sat with his wife in the back of the vessel as he placed his hand on her head. She was alright, but she needed medical attention. Anakin was a still bit crazed, but he believed he could best Palpatine. He still believed he was the most powerful being in the galaxy, but the silence of the ship made him return to his thoughts with a different perspective. Anakin kissed Padme's forehead as she lay there breathing. Anakin then stood up and walked throughout the ship to the bridge. He would sit down and think about everything that had come and gone during this time. All the people he killed. He would finally save someone from death, but the silence in his mind. He thought about what he'd done. He was crying before Padme got there, as he stared off into the balcony looking at the lava river. There was a lot of divisiveness inside of Anakin's heart. Anakin would look at the droid he constructed. C-3PO sat there with a stupid little grin on his face as he carried out his orders. R2, on the other hand, rolled up next to Anakin as he sat himself down quietly. Anakin placed his hand on R2's head and thought for a moment. He was in a deep state of thought as the ship entered hyperspace. On the other side of the galaxy, Yoda fell to defeat at the hands of Darth Sidious. 
Yoda was still able to escape, and he and Bail headed towards Polis Massa, the agreed meeting location for after the duels. But after several hours, it was more than obvious that Obi-Wan hadn't won his battle. Seize knew Anakin won his battle, but he didn't know where Anakin was. He wasn't sure of the location of Skywalker. Seize was disappointed that Vader would just leave his location without permission from him. There had to be a reason for it. Palpatine wasn't aware that Padme had left Coruscant. As far as he knew, she was still in her residence, and he was going to have the clones make her death look like a suicide of some sorts. The entire intention was to push Anakin to the dark side and blame the Jedi for it. It was a long shot, but with how hot-headed Anakin Skywalker was, there was a chance that he would just openly believe it. Though on Naboo, Anakin carried his wife into the secret medical facility for royals. The medical facility was buried into the side of the mountain, under the Theed Palace. The facility was completely hidden from everybody. The only people that could access it were the workers and the royalty that needed to use it. Because Naboo elected its royalty, there were a select group of people and family members of royals that could continuously use it. The senators didn't have access to it, and neither did local government officials. And while Palpatine was the chancellor, he wasn't a royal, and so he didn't have access to it, let alone knowledge of it. Anakin didn't know about it until C-3PO told him about where they were going. When the ship landed in the hangar, Padme was immediately taken down into the depths of the facility. Anakin was allowed to follow because he was married to a royal. In the bottom of the facility, there were numerous amounts of medical droids, and they all got to work immediately. Anakin stayed by his wife's side throughout the entire process. For Palpatine, he was losing his patience. He couldn't contact Anakin, and the only lead was the ship that was still on Mustafar. When Palpatine went to Mustafar, he couldn't find Anakin, just his ship. Anakin was seemingly gone, and Sidious was extremely pissed off. Anakin would eventually have the distinct honor of being present for the birth of his children, Luke and Leia. For Anakin and Padme, it was the names they both chose. There was no disagreement. They didn't expect twins, but now they had twins. Padme was in an obvious amount of pain, and she was still rather upset with Anakin, but after giving birth, she was taken by the medical droids and put to rest for a little. She was given some medicine to ensure that she recovered healthily. Luke and Leia, on the other hand, were taken into another room so that they could be taken care of, up to royal standards at least. Anakin was seated alone. He thought about everything that had transpired, and so he took a walk. C-3PO and R2-D2 watched as Anakin stood up and walked out of the room. There were a lot of things going through his mind at the moment. Anakin walked over to a shootout of the main temple. It was a little room that was open and stood above the massive waterfalls. It was where Qui-Gon Jinn was laid to rest. Anakin walked out across the pathway and looked down. He saw the green grasses and heard the water flowing behind him. Anakin leaned over the railing and thought momentarily. Anakin had his robe over his head and under the robe were the deceiving thoughts of a broken man. The heart of Skywalker was disgruntled and torn apart. There was little to say about the effects this could have on not just him but the galaxy. Anakin thought back on everything, especially because his wife was now safe. He looked into the eyes of every single person he slaughtered inside of the temple, innocent individuals inside of that temple. The memories were full of pain. How could he have done that so easily? He showed no mercy and he killed all of them. There wasn't even a hint of regret when he did it. Anakin looked over the edge as he felt sick in his stomach. The memories of little boys and girls slaughtered inside of the Jedi Temple they were raised in. They weren't even given a fighting chance. The 501st was so elite that there was nothing that they could do. Not even a hope in the galaxy that Syndralic or the Temple Guards could save them. Maybe had Anakin not killed Syndralic so easily, the 501st could have been stopped. But he woke up the temple to its darkest hour. Anakin placed his hands over his face as he let out a terrible scream. Sure, Padme was alive, but at what cost? Who had to suffer so that she could give a perfectly normal birth without any complications? Padme was literally perfectly fine. There was no reason for him to have any concern about her birth. Then Anakin realized the errors of what he'd done. Anakin thought back to what Obi-Wan said. Even in his final moments, he was still able to tell him that he loved him. And sure, in Obi-Wan's mind, he was saying it to Satine, Anakin didn't know that, and he didn't need to know that. Obi-Wan said it to Anakin as well, but he was just thinking of Satine in the moment. Skywalker let out a terrible scream as it echoed over the entire valley below him. He couldn't believe it. His stomach twisted in knots as he fell to his knees. Anakin's eyes watered as he breathed in shallow breaths. His heart broke into a billion pieces as he sobbed. He had never felt so weak, so broken. He created so much pain, and it was all a lie. Everything Palpatine did, it was a deception, and now Palpatine had control over not just the entire Senate, but the entire galaxy. The entire Republic was now an empire, and it was all because Anakin gave him that power to do that. Anakin's entire body felt fragile. 
as he looked through his hair and towards a small room, the same room that they buried Qui-Gon in. And he thought he saw someone in there. Anakin got up from his feet and ran over to see who it was. Skywalker wiped tears away from his face as he pushed the hair out of his eyes, as he ran over and looked at the empty chamber. Anakin stepped over to where Qui-Gon was buried, and placed his hand on the char that was left from the last funeral. Anakin spoke aloud as he apologized to Qui-Gon Jinn for failing. He was supposed to bring balance to the Force, and seemingly did the opposite of that. A voice crept over Anakin's back as Skywalker turned around to hear the voice of Qui-Gon Jinn. The voice told him that he believed that Anakin would be able to overcome his greatest failure, defeat his demons, and bring balance to the Force. Anakin cried out asking how he could do it, if all he did was bring destruction down on everything he knew. Jin told Anakin that things would sort themselves out, but Anakin needed to bring balance to the Force. Skywalker lowered his head as his heart sunk into his chest. Obi-Wan's voice was unheard as Obi-Wan told Anakin that there wasn't anything he could do. Anakin whipped his head around and looked at the ghosts of Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan standing side by side. This was total disbelief for Skywalker. They both knew he could do it, but he had the trust that he could do it, especially by himself. Anakin looked down at his hands and then to his belt. He had two blades. He still hadn't gotten rid of Obi-Wan's lightsaber. Anakin had finally come full circle. Maybe if Obi-Wan didn't show up, this would have happened sooner. But the madness that Skywalker possessed on Mustafar withered away as he realized that the power he had meant nothing without the ones he loved. It was a shame. It took him so long to understand, but everything made sense now. Anakin looked back to see if Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan had anything else to say, but they were gone. Skywalker knew what he had to do, especially if he wanted to create a better galaxy for his children. This would be the fight of his life. He wasn't just fighting for Padme, no, he was fighting for his family, and for the galaxy. The entire balance of everything was on his back, and because if he could defeat Sidious, then there was a possibility that the galaxy would be able to find its peace and its balance. Anakin walked forward as he made his way to the hangar bay. He was going to find Sidious, and he was going to kill him. There wasn't going to be anything to stop him from doing so. Anakin intended on being back before Padme awoke. Were there any fears for Skywalker? Sure, he was about to fight the face of evil in the galaxy alone. Anakin loaded up into one of several N1 starfighters in the hangar bay. He then whipped the ship out of the hangar bay as he pressed it on its accelerator all the way forward as he launched it into the atmosphere. Anakin closed his eyes as he pressed the hyperdrive and jumped into hyperspace. Anakin sat quietly inside of the starfighter as he thought about everything, again going through the emotions of the days that had passed. Anakin was still very distraught, but he knew more than anything that he had to be focused and he needed to be ready. The ship floated through hyperspace as thousands of voices cried out in pain and terror. Just memories, just memories, Anakin told himself, that the memories could not hurt him, but he needed to avenge them. He couldn't come at this like Mustafar Anakin or Temple Vader. He needed to be Anakin Skywalker, not the Jedi nor the Sith, just the man meant to bring balance to the Force. His only objective was to sow peace into the hearts of the galaxy. Anakin arrived at Coruscant and he looked at the massive blockade surrounding the planet. It was almost robotic, there was no sign of life. Anakin pulled his ship around the fleet and to the surface of the planet. Anakin knew he was safe. He was specially selected from all the Jedi that he was protected from Order 66. And he knew this as he pulled his ship down into the Senate building landing bay. The N1 landed and Anakin exited the starfighter as he looked around and noticed swarms of Coruscant guardsmen coming towards him. Skywalker didn't budge, he just looked at them. He knew that they were here for him, and what they would do, he didn't know. He stood in front of them and raised his hood. Commander Fox greeted him with a salute and told him that the Emperor was expecting him. Skywalker nodded his head and stepped forward. The presence of Vader was demanding, and while Anakin knew what he was doing, playing the part of Vader that is, it was empowering. The clone stood aside as Vader's boots echoed throughout the halls as he marched down towards the same room that everything changed in. Vader stepped forward. The room had been cleared of the dead Jedi, and the window was replaced. The Coruscant guard followed Skywalker to the room, but when he entered, he used the force to close the door and lock it behind him. Sidious looked up from his desk and cackled to himself, telling his apprentice he was wondering when he might show up. Vader looked at Sidious from under the robe, presenting yellow eyes as he knelt before his master. Sidious grinned, asking if Vader understood the gravity of his actions. Vader didn't speak a word. Sidious told Vader that he disobeyed orders and proceeded to ask why Vader would do such a thing. Vader didn't speak as he looked at Sidious from under his robe. The Dark Lord of the Sith was fed up and turned around and shot lightning at Skywalker. Vader took out his lightsaber and ignited it and blocked the lightning. Sidious looked at Skywalker and demanded that he stand down. 
Vader didn't hesitate as he rose above Palpatine, being much taller than his master as he looked down at Palpatine from across the room. Sidious saw this as a challenge for power, a challenge to the right to be a true Sith Lord, and without hesitation, he knitted his own lightsaber and said the words, So be it. Vader twisted his blade up as it covered his face in his traditional form of combat. Sidious leapt forward, swinging his blade violently at Skywalker, as he darted back and pulled his blade around, and clashed with his master. Sidious and Vader toiled with one another. This would be the battle of offensive speed. Obi-Wan vs. Anakin was about offense and defense, but this here would be a battle of precision with a lightsaber. Sidious jabbed forward as Anakin pulled out Obi-Wan's lightsaber and ignited it to block the strike from Sidious. The Dark Lord cackled again, asking if Anakin really had just killed his old master just to fight his new one with the same lightsaber. Anakin held himself together. He knew that Sidious was trying to throw him off balance by angering him. The Coruscant guard outside the room could hear the commotion as they started to bang on the doors trying to get in. Sidious bounced off furniture as he landed next to Anakin swinging his blade at Skywalker. Anakin ducked under and brought both blades together as he swung against Sidious. Anakin for the first time claimed the offensive power, swinging both blades with one another as he pushed back against Sidious. The Dark Lord was in fear as he rolled back, blocking each lightsaber that came his way. Sidious leapt backwards as he seized the high ground and looked down at Anakin from his height. Anakin remembered something Obi-Wan talked about a lot. It was the advantage of the high ground. Anakin hesitated as he stepped back and looked at Sidious. The Dark Lord laughed. Anakin then spun around in a circle as he launched Obi-Wan's lightsaber at Sidious. The Dark Lord jumped out of the way as he tried to block the lightsaber, but he looked up to see Anakin leaping towards him. Skywalker and Sidious caught each other as their blades twisted in each other's hands. The screaming of their blades was outrageous. Skywalker looked down at Sidious as the Dark Lord could feel the power of the Chosen One lining up against him. Sidious felt fear for a moment as Skywalker doubled back as he pulled Obi-Wan's lightsaber out of the wall and caught it as he brought it around against Sidious. The Dark Lord kicked Anakin in the stomach and saw his advantage as he rose to leap at Skywalker. Skywalker fell back and rolled under the blade as he kicked Sidious in the jaw. The Sith Lord jolted back as Anakin rose to his feet, clashing with his right blade's hand against Sidious. The two of them looked at each other. Skywalker started to swing violently as he cut at Sidious. Palpatine tried his best to defend himself as he shot lightning at Skywalker, but Anakin blocked the lightning as he threw it back into Sidious, and then, with both of his blades, he jabbed and cut Sidious, and the Sith Lord was thrown apart and his body was torn into pieces. Anakin looked down as a Coruscant guard breached the room. Anakin moved back into defense as the clones opened fire at him. Anakin blocked their shots and then sheathed Obi-Wan's blade as he pulled Commander Fox with the force and shoved his lightsaber into Fox's stomach, telling him that this was for fives. Anakin threw the body to the side as Coruscant guard piled in through the door. Anakin blocked all their shots and then with the force, he pulled them down and around, some of the clones being pulled in front of blaster fire and other ones being thrown into walls. Skywalker leapt across the room and got into close quarters as he reignited Obi-Wan's blade and cut through the clones that surrounded him. They all cried out in pain as they dropped to the ground dead. Anakin looked out. The halls echoed with blaster fire. Skywalker raised his hood and made his way back to the N1 Starfighter. The troops weren't aware of who had done this as Anakin made his way back to the ship, and he was left alone. Skywalker entered the ship and made his way back to Naboo. Over the coming days, it would be revealed that Anakin Skywalker killed the Emperor of the Galaxy, and there would be a hit list put out for him to be killed, alongside the rest of the surviving members of the Jedi Council, such as Shakti, Yoda, Coleman Kaj, Opa Rancius, and Obi-Wan, who no one knew was killed on Mustafar. Skywalker would take his children and his wife to their private estate on the far side of the planet, tucked away in some valleys. Anakin would reside here. The quiet, peaceful landscape of Naboo was very good for him to be around. As for Padme, she would reunite with Bail Organa and Mon Mothma as they would begin to work on fixing the Republic. Padme would have to find it in her heart to be able to forgive Anakin. But without the Emperor, the Empire was lost, so the politicians had to come together and work out all these issues. So that's where Padme went. Yoda would retire to Dagobah and he would stay in hiding. The other Jedi Masters, unaware of Anakin's betrayal to the Jedi Order, would see that he had been a hero for killing the Emperor and extinguishing the Sith forever. And while it was unknown at the moment that Maul had survived, Anakin would suffer in silence while raising his children alone. Though an old teacher would make his presence known to Anakin, and he would guide Anakin to finding peace that he needed. That teacher was Obi-Wan Kenobi. While Qui-Gon could have done it, it was Obi-Wan who wanted to make sure that Anakin would find peace, even after what he did to the Jedi. 
Ahsoka would eventually find Anakin on Naboo, and the two of them would learn the fate of each other and what happened since the fall of the Republic. Without a strong empire though, there would be no reason for quarrel, no reason for rebellion. Ahsoka would be proud of Anakin for coming full circle to learning the path of inner peace, but she would have to depart. As for Padme, she would help the Republic find itself for the first time in a couple years after Order 66. When the Republic found itself a new democracy, Padme would return to Naboo to raise her children with Anakin. The Jedi would be moved from the kill list and Anakin would never be found by public officials. While Anakin would struggle with his inner turmoil for years, he would never be able to escape the nightmares of Order 66. He would eventually find peace as his children grew and he would be able to teach them the ways of the Force. Luke and Leia would grow into incredibly exceptional Force users, and as for the remaining council members, they would eventually come together and restart the Jedi Order, without the Empire trying to hunt them down and kill them. It would take generations until the Jedi would earn their respect back in the public eye, but when they eventually did, they would help sow peace. Maul and Ahsoka would have one final run-in with one another. Ahsoka would be the one to best Maul, and it would sow the end of the Sith into the history books forever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to Benjamin Wells, Icy Raptor, Apollo, Mad Mana Studios, Anakin003, and Gort for supporting the channel. Let's hit tails and likes on this video. I got a Halloween special coming out for you guys tomorrow. I'm so excited for it. You guys are not ready. Look at the thumbnail. Awesome, I know. If you want to see a what if, let me know below. I'll read our comments about the crossroads. Check out the Twitch community, Discord, and Patreon if you want to support me or be part of the community in other ways. And for you guys that want to know how to win a free light server, subscribe to the channel. Go down below. There's a doc. You put your name on the doc, and that's all you have to do. Do not respond to comments in the comment section. That is a scam. I am not that person. I announce all winners for the giveaway in videos. We are going to be giving away three lightsabers at 50,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button, like, and share. I really want to give those away, and I also really want to hit 50,000 so we can hit on to the next milestone and I can get ready for the next giveaway. Anyways, let's talk about our story here. Uh, this one was always going to be a difficult story. I actually struggle with this one. I've had this thumbnail for probably about uh, two or three months, maybe a month and a half. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it for a while. I kind of had an idea, but I feel like I feel like Anakin would really struggle after killing Obi-Wan. I think I think him killing Obi-Wan would be very satisfactory for him, but for example, if he disappeared, I feel like he would feel like he didn't really win. And I feel like Anakin's triumph over Obi-Wan wouldn't be fully um, commendable in his own eyes because he would he wouldn't be able to see Obi-Wan's dead body. He would just see the 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 robes falling to the ground and be like, "Oh, well, that didn't really go as well as I thought it would go." And I think that, I think that for um, Anakin, I think he would really struggle with, with the post Order 66 lifestyle. And I think if he got to see Luke and Leia be born, um, I think he would really, <laughs> I think he would really regret what he did. Anakin was a good man. You have to remember that he was a really good man, and only one to do was make sure that Padme survived. I know he had his little power lust on Mustafar, and I tried to talk about that power, that power craving that he had. But he would over overall come over, get over it. You know, I I feel like it it just took time. I think if Obi Wan hadn't showed up on Mustafar, then and he saw Padme, and she kind of had that reaction without Obi Wan being there he probably would have come to his senses and been like, okay, maybe I should calm down a little bit. You know, Mustafar Anakin is a much different Anakin. Mustafar Anakin is not someone you can reason with. Uh, and I've expressed that in other videos where Ahsoka showed up and something happened to her, no spoilers. But, you know, I expressed that Anakin or Mustafar is not the same Anakin that we know. That's just not the same Anakin. He's not to be reasoned with. He is unhinged and he's ready to kill. As for post Mustafar Anakin, well, we've never seen that other than Vader. And I think if if he had come off of Mustafar, whether with with killing Obi Wan or without killing Obi Wan, he would have been like, "Whoa, I messed up. I did some I did some f shit, and that I shouldn't have done that. I really should not have done what I did." So I think he would really be like, "Well." Maybe I should I should I should think about my actions and I think after thinking about his actions I think he would really understand that well Maybe what he did wasn't right and he should fix his issues now I think the biggest controversy from this video is him beating Sidious uh, That's a 50 50. I really think it's a 50 50 um, At this point I think if Anakin would come full circle and I think if he understood what he had did what he had done is wrong and I think if he had really really come to understand that the light side is more powerful than the dark side, uh, just by the patience and and finesse that it takes to, to deny the dark side. Not not being a Jedi, but I mean like 
being balanced essentially uh, that's what I mean by light side I mean being balanced I think if I think if he saw that balance I think he would have been able to beat Sidious in that circumstance only and the benefit of, of him beating Sidious in this particular video is he had two lightsabers he wasn't fighting with one so he could be more offensive or more offensive not offensive offensive and be more persistent with his strikes than Sidious could be because Sidious was one that fought with two lightsabers and without two lightsabers he'd be a little bit pressed for struggle right so I think, I think Anakin has the advantage in in the final duel here, um, because he's got the two lightsabers and he's balanced. He's internally balanced, and I think I think Sidious would struggle with with that beast that would be Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one. Um, but anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. Got an awesome Halloween special out for you guys tomorrow. I'm super stoked for it. Uh, anyways, I love you all. Spread the love. Don't forget to subscribe. Do all the things, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And always remember, my friends, may the force. Be with you.